237 Circuit Court is now in session. The Honorable Brian K. Kirk is presiding. Calling case 2018-55DP, Michael Goffberg versus Chloe Rice. Today is Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 10.03 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Podolsky on behalf of the plaintiff and Ms. Paisno on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to modify parenting time, defendant's motion to modify parenting time, and for a right of first refusal. Ms. Podolsky. Thank you, Your Honor. Our motion was pretty straightforward. These parties did not have a holiday schedule in their current order. Um, the minor child was much younger when this schedule was created. He was not yet school age. Um, so we do believe at this point now that he is school age, it is appropriate to implement the Calhoun County standard holiday schedule um, to also include uh, summer vacation periods. Um, these parties do exercise joint physical and legal custody. However, they do so on like a typical 2-2-3 basis. So we believe in the summer moving to a week on week off schedule to allow each of them um, to have some uninterrupted time with the minor child to take vacations and do things during that time off of school would be appropriate. And we requested that exchange for that time be 3.30. Um, implementing both the summer vacation schedule and the Calhoun County standard holiday schedule, um, neither of those would change the custodial environment. These parties would continue to exercise 50-50 um, parenting time. In terms of defendants' motions and their requests, um, they have stated that these parties don't follow their current schedule, but that is not true. They have followed this schedule almost to a T. Have they accommodated each other in the past when they need to? Absolutely, because they've been able to co-parent. Um, but beyond that, they have been following their current schedule. My client lives with his parents. They are a huge part of the minor child's life. They help as needed with childcare, sometimes picking up and dropping off to school if my client has to work. Uh, we do not believe that their request for a right of first refusal is appropriate. We don't agree with it. Each party can seek any child care that he or she needs uh, at those times that it is needed. And my client is using his parents who, again, he lives with. Um, some allegations were made regarding medical care for the child. We deny those allegations that were made. The child is well cared for in the home of my client by both my client, again, and his parents. Um, they have not had any issues with the health or wellness of the child. He is given everything he needs from medication to love and attention. Um, my client simply does not go to urgent care or a doctor every time that there are the sniffles or the sneezes. The most egregious allegation, though, that was made in their motion has to do with this iPad that the defendant accessed without permission. My client was at the defendant's home at her request. He was fixing a bathtub for her. When he left to go get parts to make the repair, she illegally accessed the iPad. She did so without permission and then proceeded to take screenshots of messages that she didn't find appropriate. These were not messages that were seen by the minor children. None of this was content seen by the minor child. This was all done by the defendant without permission from the plaintiff. So she has created this scenario to try and convince this court that the minor child is a danger of being exposed to negative content, but that is not the case. Um, the minor child has been allowed to use the iPad in the past under the supervision of my client. He does so to play games. He is not reading messages. He cannot read messages at this point in time, and he's not seeing any inappropriate content at all. This was the defendant on her own creating this situation and accessing that iPad without permission. We do not believe that anything that they have stated in their motion rises to the level um, outlined in Vardvarka to change custody or parenting time. And it does appear they agree with our request to implement the Calhoun County standard holiday schedule. So at this point today, we are asking that their motion in its entirety be dismissed. We're asking that the Calhoun County standard holiday schedule be implemented to include week on, week off in the summer vacation periods. Okay, thank you. Ms. Paisno, is that correct that uh, 
you are agreeable to standard holiday and uh, summer parenting time? Your Honor, that's partly correct. We are in agreement to the standard holiday parenting time. We are not in agreement to the week on week off parenting time. And my client is um, believes that due to the fact of Jackson's young age, that week on week off is not in the minor child's best interest regarding their motion. Do you want me to go further in regards to my response to their motion and then my yeah. motion? Yep, go ahead. Thanks. In response to their motion at first, as I indicated, my client is in agreement to the holiday schedule, just not the week on week off due to the minor child's age. I do believe that there is a change in circumstance and clearly a dispute in fact in regards to this minor child regarding dad's exercising of parenting time. They indicate that the minor child has a strong relationship with the grandparents and that's probably true due to the fact that 90% of dad's parenting time is with the grandparents and not with the father in this matter. There's been some exchanges with the parties where they have been able to co-parent. However, it seems to be that any time the father in this matter doesn't like something that the mom does in this case, issues are created. What we're asking for is due to the fact that Mike or the dad in this matter is not spending time with the minor child, which is one of the parenting time factors of him exercising his parenting time, that this court take a look at the parenting time structure of these, these parties, as well as the opportunity for my client to have the right of first refusal. It's always better for a minor child to be with a parent rather than a grandparent or any third party in this situation. Also, as part of my motion is a motion to modify child support due to the fact that there's been a change in circumstance regarding child support. Back when the order entered previously, the party's incomes were calculated at $12,000 and $15,000 a year. The father in this matter is owns his own business. It's a construction company. Um, he makes substantially more than $15,000 a year. And in addition, there's been a change in my client's income as well. We would ask that a hearing be held in that regard. I do have subpoenas out for dad to respond to that are due March 24th, and I'm awaiting that information. In regards to the iPad issue, it's major concern in regards to my client. The minor child does have access to this iPad. She did not illegally um, get into this iPad. The minor child was playing on the iPad sitting next to her. The father left the house or my client's house at that point in time to go get something. All these text messages started popping up. The child was on the iPad at the time as she was sitting right next to her. So she clicked on them and saw inappropriate pictures, inappropriate conversations, pictures of people who were not dressed, which raises great concerns in regards to what this minor child has access to, especially due to some of the father's construction has to do with I'll say adult venues. So he is also, my client has concerns in regards to um, what information is being passed through the iPad that he's allowed to play on. We do believe that there's been a change in circumstance to look at the right of first refusal, as well as the structure of dad's parenting time due to the fact that he's failed to exercise it. And we would ask this court to refer it to the front of the court for a child support evaluation and or hearing and a hearing on parenting time. Okay, anything else, uh, Ms. Podolsky? Thank you, Your Honor. As soon as my client realized that there was an iCloud share between his iPad and phone, he turned that off so that those messages are no longer coming to the iPad. So if the minor child were to be on it, he cannot see them. Um, and the minor child was not on the iPad. The iPad was left on the kitchen counter. It was the defendant who, in fact, accessed the iPad. And as she stated here, she clicked on those messages. And we also deny that 90% of dad's parenting time is spent with the grandparents. The minor child does go to school. The plaintiff father does work full time. And yes, he does reside with his parents, but 90% of his parenting time is not with his parents. He spends the bulk majority of his parenting time with the minor child when they are not mm -hmm. at work at school. They have a very loving relationship. They are bonded. They spend a significant amount of time together doing activities, playing. Um, he helps with schoolwork. So we vehemently deny the allegations that they've made. If the court is inclined to do a recalculation of child support, um, we understand that. Uh, we do understand that the defendant alleges she is self-employed. However, we do believe she's an able-bodied individual who could go out and get a job today working $17 an hour. So if it's necessary, it would be prudent to impute her at a wage at which she could go earn today. Um, lastly, Your Honor, as it relates to the summer parenting time, it is very standard in almost every case that has a standard summer schedule that the parties exercise week on, week off. This child is not any different than the children in those cases. We have two parents who both want to spend 
quality time with him in the summer, be able to go away for a few days or take a trip somewhere. And on their current summer schedule, they are unable to do so. So we do believe that it is important to implement the week on week off summer schedule for those purposes. And we do not believe a right of first refusal is appropriate in this matter. Thank you. Well, the parties in this uh, case apparently agree and have agreed on the record that, uh, again, we should uh, alternate the uh, standard holiday parenting time. So the court will grant that as the parties are in agreement. Uh, the court does note that the parties otherwise have disagreed as it relates to the summer uh, parenting time and the issue of uh, the support. As a result, the court will refer the issue of parenting time summer parenting time and uh, child support to the referee for a hearing. The referee can consider imputation if it's appropriate in this uh, particular matter. Court notes that uh, the parties have, again, based upon the allegations, have had difficulty in some ways facilitating parenting time and the court's not gonna add to that problem by ordering a right of first refusal. The court doesn't believe that that's appropriate. The court will deny that request. The court further, it was in the pleadings that the parties had, at least one of the parties had requested that the uh, child be allowed, or that the, uh, I think it was the uh, plaintiff would be allowed to uh, facilitate uh, transportation of the child with an adult, um, another adult. So the court will allow uh, a, an adult known to the child to provide transportation to and from parenting time. And that applies with both parties. So both parties have the right to have a third party adult uh, transport the child if that child is, or that person is known to the child. And uh, as that will cover everything at this point, I'll ask Ms. Podolsky, you would prepare that order, submit it under a seven day notice of entry and then we will do the referral order to the referee. That will conclude this matter. And uh, at 10.15 AM, you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.